This is your Weather Extreme video for Monday, August the 1st. Wow, last month of summer. Oh, yes, I'm ready for some fall. I'm meteorologist Brian Peters, and satellite image this morning shows a few leftover clouds across parts of uh, central Alabama, especially down in the Montgomery area. The uh, weather map features that surface high pressure that has been over the southeastern U.S., bulging into the area from the Atlantic, from the Bermuda High, and that uh, nearly permanent feature this summer remains with us. In the upper atmosphere, we finally have lost that little weak trough that was over the lower Mississippi River Valley and as the ridge builds stronger, and it looks like the ridge will be building stronger this week, but the GFS has uh, got a little bit of a surprise in there for us. The temperatures this morning starting out in the 70s for the most part, still a little cooler in the northeast sections. Radar somewhat quiet across Alabama. We do have some showers just offshore from uh, Alabama and the northwest Florida coastline. Watch warning map, not too bad this morning. We have uh, the orange areas in Louisiana and Oklahoma that are basically heat advisories. We also have some green there in Arizona and New Mexico, and those are flash flood watches. The quantitative precipitation forecast, and you can see why there's flash flood watches over there in Arizona and New Mexico. They have on the order of four to nearly uh, a little over five inches of rain forecast for that area. In the meantime, over the southeastern U.S., you can see the primary influence of the uh, sea breeze, keeping the precipitation uh, the heaviest along the Gulf Coast area, and that is for the next five days. Storm Prediction Center has a slight risk over parts of uh, Minnesota, North and South Dakota, and Northwestern Iowa primarily. That's surrounded by a marginal risk. For day two, we have two marginal risks, uh, one over uh, Wisconsin and parts of uh, Iowa, uh, Illinois, Indiana, and a little bit of the southeast part of Minnesota. And then uh, we have a second area primarily in the, the eastern parts of Montana. And for day three, slight risk over primarily North Dakota catching a little bit of northwestern Minnesota, and uh, that's pretty much it. Tropics, well, we went from two disturbances yesterday to one this morning, uh, and that one has overnight developed uh, very nicely, and it is looking much more organized uh, today, and uh, the National Hurricane Center has raised the probability that it could become uh, a tropical system uh, to 70%, so pretty high there. Future track uh, is fairly closely uh, clustered, uh, primarily uh, on a westerly, maybe a little north of west um, motion. It's going to take it a little close to Central America before going into the Yucatan primarily and then coming out into the southwest Gulf and then uh, hitting the coast of Mexico. Um, don't uh, don't expect it to be a major storm, uh, but the uh, water over the Western Caribbean is kind of warm. And in the uh, Eastern Pacific, uh, the Eastern North Pacific, to be specific, oh, <laughs> we have Howard and a an, uh, disturbed area. Howard's a tropical storm, and neither of those areas are affecting land. All right, the 06 GFS model run. And here comes the ridge, uh, as I title this uh, chapter two, Ridge, Ridge, Ridge. And that's what we're going to be dealing with this week. Tuesday, you see the ridge continuing to build stronger at 594 contour, uh, affecting all the way from Mississippi all the way over to Southern California. And uh, what does that do for our surface weather? Well, it just keeps us basically in the humid humidity, the high humid area, and we have chances for showers and thunderstorms. Now, interestingly, uh, for today, the HRR has a suggestion that most of the showers will be to the uh, east and south of the I-59 corridor. We'll see if that comes true. All right, back to the GFS here, and there's Wednesday's forecast, and of course the 594 contour a little bit smaller, but the ridge bulging up northward, and we see that the main traveling weather systems stay well north of us. We have one moving across uh, southern Canada, uh, just barely uh, into Canada, and right along the U.S.-Canadian border. But once again, for us, that keeps us in high pressure, and that basically is keeping us uh, with uh, just scattered afternoon and early evening showers and thunderstorms. Now, notice we do have the system in the uh, Western Caribbean coming into the landmass there, and looking a little bit closer at that, uh, the, the GFS for the Caribbean area uh, showing that coming in uh, to uh, the we the uh, Western uh, Caribbean area, 
uh, and that could well be a named storm by then. And if it is named, by the way, it will be Earl. Friday, the uh, ridge still fairly strong, but the strength of those traveling systems to the north are beating it down. We see it, uh, the 588 kind of looking that where that line is. It kind of beats it down a little, not much. And unfortunately for us, we're still under the ridge. Now, uh, notice what we see there over uh, the lower Mississippi River Valley. It looks like on Thursday and into Friday and Saturday, we have a little bit of an easterly wave. Uh, the GFS Moss numbers certainly uh, support the idea that we might see a little bit more in the way of clouds as well as uh, showers, thanks to that easterly wave, which actually starts out uh, over North Florida uh, on Thursday. Uh, so, but still, it, it just means that we're going to be in the soup and going to stay with the chance for showers and thunderstorms. Going out to, to Sunday, we do see that little. Uh, uh, disturbance still there over Arkansas and parts of southeastern Oklahoma. And then by the time we reach the end of the period a week from today, uh, that is in the flow there and beginning to come back to the east. So that may actually increase our chances for showers on Monday as well. All right, going out into voodoo country. And uh, the big news here is the GFS is uh, back to the bullish idea of uh, a pretty substantial ridge over the central U.S. around the 11th of August. But could the GFS be right about this? And that is a substantial trough developing over the eastern third of the country. And this trough, deep enough and strong enough to perhaps represent the first front of the season, the one that comes in mid-August that often lets us know that fall is not too far away. And we'll see. It's voodoo country. You just never know. Thanks for tuning in to the Weather Extreme video. I expect to have the next one posted uh, first thing on uh, Tuesday morning. In the meantime, stay tuned to the blog for notes on Alabama's weather. I'm meteorologist Brian Peters. Have a great day and Godspeed.